Oh, you're with us. Sorry about that. Don't quite know what happened to Pridelands, but we have been sitting here quite some time watching Missy's wig and Olivia. Now, before I go into the owls, she keeps opening her eyes, which is very sweet. Ah, I've checked all the dens, bar two, everyone. Long gone are the days where you used to watch us getting frazzled and frustrated, but I can assure you I am. I do not know where the hyenas are. I've got two more dens to go, and then I am going to search for Klingula, my new love, the leopard. But we just thought we would stop. It's very important that I stop every single day at the wake house. And at least we're getting to see her face and her eyes are all wide open as we knew they would be. But I'm still not getting to see her on her own. And I'm seeing her. We obviously don't know the sex, but I don't want to say it. It's not very pleasant. The head is disproportionately large for the body, the muscles and the spine to hold up in one place. And therefore, we need to see, is she squatting? Is she standing? Is she moving her wings? What's the feathers like? Is her flight feathers starting to marginally come through? Are we nowhere near that stage? We really don't know. Because Mama is always there, protecting her little baby. Now, if you look at Mama's face, it's very well defined. You can see that sort of radar disc. The feathers are positioned in such a way as creates that circle around her face. And it's highly specialized. And then if you look at Olivia, there's absolutely no definition whatsoever. Just a lot of fluffy gray down on her head. And it all takes time to come together. A chick doesn't need to have that radar disc, the facial disc. I'll tell you why. The chick doesn't need to have flight feathers just yet, so not flying. So in order to save energy in a developmental process, everything comes as the chick is developing. Now that facial disc is to channel in sounds. And the beak, believe it or not, although it's very sharp, Owls can be considered raptors. The beak is actually quite flat and pointy downwards. And again, this is a system in not blocking that facial disc, if you like. That's how important it actually is. And they guide the sounds into the ear opening, that facial disc. And it's just feathers, but it's a specific arrangement of feathers. And they do have an ear hole. They don't have an external cartilage here on either side of the facial disc, but we just can't see. Oh, thank you, Mama. In there, just where that black line is, there's a ear hole. And some species, I believe not all, but I know definitely the barn owls, they actually have their ears their ear openings, the ear holes, asymmetrically set on the head. So one will be higher than the other, which I just think is utterly baffling. And that's to allow for almost just a split second difference, split second, not even a second difference in the reception of sound in each ear. So it's going to hit one ear before the other in a fraction of a second. And then that allows the owl to pinpoint the sound exactly and catch prey in total darkness. I'm not actually sure. I need to do some research whether that is the case for the spotted eagle owls. But I know a lot of owl species have asymmetrically set ear holes. So we're going to say bye to the wig family for now. And I'm going to continue my furious search of two more hyena dens.